When it comes to Irish farming, one crop is the undisputed champion, grass. Grass is grown on about 90% of our agricultural land. It's the lifeblood of beef, dairy and sheep farming. And in our temperate oceanic climate, it grows almost all year round. But we could do much more with this crop. We could harvest our grass for gas. Cows eat grass and produce methane that goes into the atmosphere to form a greenhouse gas. One cow produces so much methane, it has the same global warming impact as the annual journeys of the average family car. Ireland's agricultural expansion to 7 million cows are the biggest contributor to missing our emissions targets. And we're now facing major fines from Europe. What if we could use grass to create a renewable gas? An anaerobic digestion plant does exactly the same thing, but the methane that it produces creates a renewable energy resource that displaces fossil fuel. And it's not just grass. Organic material like food waste, animal slurry, human sewage can produce biogas. Down near Clonakilty, mechanical engineer Kieran Coffey has designed and built his own mini anaerobic digester plant. You're producing your own biogas? Absolutely, yeah. This is our micro scale anaerobic digester, Duncan. Right. This treats all our food waste and it converts it into a biogas. So that's a bit like a cow's stomach. Exactly, Isn't yeah, it? it's like a cow's stomach, exactly. And the same bacteria that are in a cow's stomach are inside in this digester and they do the same job. They convert the food that we put into it into a, a biogas. So we've got a mix of waste there, Duncan. Yeah. So we take it over to the sink and we've got, we've got a macerator, an in-sink macerator. Mix it with water. Very quick, all yeah. gone down there very quick. And there's a pump then that, that pumps it into the digester every, every couple of hours. Right. So in a year, how much gas would you expect to produce? This will produce about 120,000 litres of gas. This is incredible. Now, obviously there's liquid in this besides gas, you know, yes. it's digesting. Yes. Yeah. Can we see it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, okay. It's, yeah. a, it's like a liquid uh, compost, um, Duncan. We use it around our garden, but we also give it to our neighbours who grow vegetables, and then they give us some of those vegetables. So it closes the whole it loop? It closes the whole loop, Circular yeah. Circular economy, Absolutely, really. yeah. Kieran's anaerobic digester produces more than enough biogas for all his family's cooking needs, all powered by his household food waste. So what are we going to cook? We're going to cook a stir fry, a chicken stir fry. And it's working away fine. That ring is really perfect, isn't yeah. it? Do you see a future for biogas in Ireland? I do, and I think there's a role for all different sizes, large and small. In, yeah. in the whole mix. There's still mm -hmm. gas, there's no problem to it. Yeah. Yeah. Standard, same, same as normal gas. Yeah. So here's your first meal cooked with biogas. Oh, Duncan. wow. Looks yeah. really good, lovely. Thanks. You're welcome. I'm really impressed with Kieran's domestic anaerobic digester. Wouldn't it be great if all our brown bin waste was diverted to local AD plants to make biogas like this? But how easily can this be scaled up? On Billy Costello's pig farm in Kildare, anaerobic digestion on a much larger scale is already up and running. The slurry from the pig farm is used in the two large digesters on site, along with waste from the food industry. Out of date food from supermarkets, yogurts, every type of product. And probably good food, otherwise it's just Good food, it may be out of date, it may be not temperature correct. There's a lot of food waste and I think there's about 500,000 tonnes. Then all of that food waste can all go into, into digesters and be turned into energy instead of waste. And here you have some pizza waste, 
This and is all pizza here. This, this big mountain over area here. Over here is pizza waste that was not up to specifications. They have very high standards. So if it was not up to the full specification, it has to be used in product like this or else landfill. And this is much better. In fairness to the food companies, they are very yet more sustainable and responsible. They want to see it going into something that's recycling. And when you provide a service for them, they do avail of it. The biogas is collected in a large storage vessel at the back of the site. Billy, the, the biogas now that's produced here, Yes. what does that actually do? That biogas travels in that yellow pipe down into a large engine, and there it's made into electricity and heat. Billy, 90% of our agricultural land is grassland. Correct. And farmers are struggling trying to produce a living Absolutely, out of it. Absolutely, except dairy farmers are expanding and they're growing, but the suckler part of the business is softening, except for the premium that they're getting in from the EU. So, what benefits now would biogas be to farmers? If you're, farmers. A, if you're a cattle suckler farmer and you decided, right, I want to ma make a supplementary income, and you take part of your land and say, I will grow silage for a biogas plant and I get an income and I get paid every month and I have a sale. It's just, it's a new, it's a new industry to say that I'm an energy farmer rather than a cattle farmer or a dairy farmer or a sheep farmer. So that I, what I do is I grow crops for energy. The country is able to produce the product. If we do it, we don't have to import oil and gas and we have the natural resources. So what's and holding it back, Billy? What, what's wrong? The biggest thing I'm told is that the Department of Finance say that uh, what is the cost for Ireland to produce a kilowatt of heat from biogas and could we do it from wood chip cheaper? And if they're a percentage cheaper, they're saying, OK, let's import it from the United States and we'll do that. It's totally mad. But we send the money to America, to Donald Trump, instead of giving it to a farmer in Castlery. Could the lifeblood of Irish agriculture really be used in anaerobic digestion to produce gas? In UCC, Professor Jerry Murphy and his team are world leaders in biogas research. And they've been testing different feedstocks, including grass, in many anaerobic digesters in their labs. The biggest resource in Ireland is more than likely grass silage. That should be digested with slurries. And Ireland has an awful lot of slurry. For example, in Ireland, we have to decarbonise transport. And a number of European cities have said that there will be no diesel used in the cities by 2025, so Paris, Athens. We can produce the biogas to run all our buses from slurries and grass. It is an advanced biofuel. And of course, Stockholm runs all its buses from yes. biogas. So I think biogas suits the Irish system very, very well if we started using biogas. Nearly all of Ireland's trucks and buses run on diesel, emitting greenhouse gases and particulates that we now know are extremely damaging to our health. The move away from diesel transport has been painfully slow in Ireland. The happy pair in Wicklow have made the switch to natural gas for their transport fuel. It means lower greenhouse gases and almost no particulate emissions. But the gas comes directly from the grid, so it's still a non-renewable imported fossil fuel. Literally pop it out, pop it in, until we, we get a little clip. That's it. That's it. Right. Now, this is all natural gas, so it's kind of fossil gas, really. Yeah. When so. would you expect to convert now to biomethane? So our vision all along has been to, to get to biogas or biomethane. And if you look at what the latest UN study uh, on climate change, we have 12 years to turn it around, and business as usual won't cut it. So big, drastic action is needed, and as soon as it becomes available from the grid, Gas Networks Ireland grid, we'll be moving straight away. And that's our vision from all along to move to biomethane. Compressed gas is an ideal fuel for heavy goods vehicles, and some companies such as Diageo already use it. With AD plants like Billy Costello's now producing biogas, the potential for a fully renewable transport fuel could become a reality. We know that most of our transport needs to go electric. But could renewable gas be a solution for most of our larger vehicles?
the truck is running on natural gas and I suppose bringing it through, bringing a material like this into James' Gate, the heart of Dublin city, you know, in essence it's reducing or eliminating carbon or particulate matter emissions because natural gas doesn't, when it's burned, doesn't produce any particulate matter, which is probably the biggest uh, concern from an urban centre point of view. So an awful lot of our diesel for trucks and buses could be replaced by biomethane around the country? Yes, so we import all of our diesel. This can be absolutely 100% indigenously produced and I suppose security of supply as well or other considerations. But primarily it's renewable, it's decarbonising, it's healthier for the environment, especially urban centres. So essentially it's ideal for heavier vehicles. So HGVs, buses, perfect as well. So anything above four tonnes really, gas powered, is we believe the way to go. This year, Gas Networks Ireland will start to inject biomethane into the gas grid. So where will that gas come from? Will Irish farmers be willing to harvest some of their grass for use in its production? Grass grows better in Ireland than almost anywhere else in the world. Most of it is eaten by the 7 million cattle in our dairy and beef herds. Whether grazing in fields or eating silage indoors, each cow emits methane as they digest. Our grass is also an ideal feedstock for an anaerobic digester. But would farmers be willing to divert some of their grass into biogas production? I particularly want to talk to small beef farmers because they seem to be really struggling to break even or make a basic living from cattle farming. All those farmers coming here tonight yes basically are selling their cattle They'll go back. at a loss. Absolutely. The money is re, re going back into the cow again to produce a calf for next year just to stay standing. So there is no real profit out and of so that. why are farmers doing it? Why are they doing it? What? Because the of the subsidies. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. So effectively, that's the only thing that the farmer has. Yeah. And are they making a decent, small farmers making a decent living out of that? Subsidy? I don't know anyone whose wife isn't working, who hasn't got a sideline job, who's in the beef game now. There's so few of them left that can say they're beef farmers. I, I, I believe the figure that Chagas produced last year on cattle at a, in a report was that 83% of cattle farmers in Ireland can't make a living out of cattle. That would be probably be so. They're dependent on the grants that's coming from Europe, which is a very sad situation. So in most cases, I would say the grants is half the farmer's income. And like, that shouldn't be the thing. If a business can stand on its own feet, like. So and most, most Irish farmers would prefer not to be dependent on grants at this stage. Right, and at the moment, is yeah. the grant subsidising the production of it the is, cattle? It is, it is. So if, you, if there was no grant, of course, they'd make no living. They'd make no living. The problem is, then we're, we're told by different organisations the only way we'll make a living is to produce more, which I think is counterproductive because all of a sudden you're using, you're more, using more chemicals, more sprays, uh, you have more slurry about, and I think the factories are laughing at us because they're, they're delighted we're producing more, so they can, they can automatically drop the price. So do you see a future for cattle farming, like sucker cattle farming? At, at the moment, no. If farmers could earn a decent livelihood from their current grass by diversifying to bioenergy production, then maybe our inflated beef herd could reduce in size. But I wonder what the farmers here will think of the idea of harvesting an energy crop. Say the problems I would see with your idea is it's not as simple as you seem to think it is in that there are areas where you have high you know, concentrations of dairy, where your system won't compete because no. Okay. The dairy will compete but, too strongly against it. But there are other areas where this thing would be a godsend. Yeah, yeah. It is a possibility. It could be done. Tw 100 years ago, 20% of all land was used in the production of energy to feed the horse. Like, right. we should go back to it. Like, and instead of importing energy, we should produce our own. And if that became a viable alternative to producing oversupplied beef, maybe it is the way to go. I want not to be a slave to the beef industry. I want not to be a slave to the dairy industry. So if you want to guarantee a future for some guy in Mayo or Meat or Wicklow who's in the cattle industry, give him an alternative supply for his grass. And if he has an alternative source of income from his grass, the beef market will have to compete. And it's a, it'll be a market and let the markets prevail, but we have to create an alternative market because at the moment we're prisoners.
beef, dairy and pig farming involve housing animals for some or all of the year, and this results in huge amounts of animal slurry. That slurry typically ends up being sprayed as fertiliser on agricultural land. This results in huge amounts of methane, nitrous oxide and ammonia emissions, and runoff of nitrates and phosphates from the land into our streams and rivers. If that raw slurry went instead into anaerobic digesters, the farmers would use the digestate from the AD plant as a biofertilizer. Said to be a much better fertilizer than the slurry itself. Anaerobic digestion is much more established in Northern Ireland, so I'm heading to the FB research farm in Hillsborough, where they use grass and slurry in their digester. Gary, typically in Ireland, farmers spread slurry for nutrient for their land. If they had a digestate coming from a biogas plant, would that be better for spreading on the land? Once we put these materials through the anaerobic digestion process, um, obviously we remove a lot of the greenhouse gas production from slurry especially. And then we also have that added benefit of the more potent digestate that we produce in terms of its higher plant available nitrogen. Once that's put back on the grassland, then we should see an increase in grass dry matter production from that grassland. So in other words, digestate is a, a more potent biofertilizer compared to the raw slurry that the, the digestate came from. As with all fertilizer, digestate needs to be applied much more responsibly, such as by precision injecting by a trailing shoe, instead of by spreading and spraying into the air by a splash plate. There's no doubt the more that we try to push production in the milk sector or the beef sector or whatever it is, we also have more environmental issues to deal with in terms of greenhouse gas productions and more nutrients, typically on the land that are already nutrient saturated. Foodwise 2025 is a 10 year plan to dramatically grow the Irish agri food export sector. But this is completely at odds with Ireland's obligations to meet our greenhouse gas reduction targets. If we want to increase the number of cattle, going hand in hand with that are increases in greenhouse gas emissions. So how can we decrease our greenhouse gas emissions if we're increasing cattle? It becomes a quite difficult uh, thing to juggle. So if you look at grassland in Northern Ireland and in the Republic of Ireland, 90% of your farmland in Northern Ireland is producing grass and cattle. Could a lot of that grass be diverted to biogas? Is that part of the solution? Definitely I would think see it as part of the solution. Like most of our beef is exported. In some years up to 90% of beef is exported. And at the same time we import the vast majority of our energy. So you know we export 90% of our beef, we import 90% of our energy. I would argue that, that surely there is a better balance to be had. Some of that grassland could be used for energy purposes. So if we reduce the number of cattle, by default, we are going to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. Now, obviously, this is quite a sensitive subject um, because farmers farm cattle. But I would argue that farmers here are experts in growing grass. We grow the best grass any, pretty much anywhere in the world. They could apply those same skills and that same knowledge that they have to produce grass for an anaerobic digestion plant to thus produce biogas, displace fossil fuels and reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. The fear is that a biogas industry in Ireland could create an even bigger demand for grass growth, more chemical nitrogen, spraying of fertilizers, and increase intensification of land. A biogas industry needs to be set up in such a way that it clearly reduces on-farm and our overall greenhouse gas emissions, as well as reducing nutrient runoff and ammonia emissions. This can be achieved if the right environmental procedures were made conditional on receipt of any government incentives. It's a big day at Billy Costello's pig farm in Kildare. He can now remove CO2 from his biogas, which means that Billy's anaerobic digesters are now converting food waste and pig slurry into renewable biomethane gas that can be injected directly into the national gas grid. With all of the benefits of this gas, you know, environmental benefits, and it's keeping money in the local economy, it's reducing our imports of fuel, 
all sorts of benefits. Are you well paid for this? No, there is no payment system in Ireland for putting gas into the grid. We're the only country in Europe that doesn't have a system for promoting the renewable gas. In every other country in Europe, the government subsidizes uh, a, a tariff. They give a money towards the producer of renewable gas. Right. How much are you going to get for this? And how much would you get in Northern Ireland? Per uh, kilowatt hour? In Ireland, you get two and a half cents for the, the same as the Carlow gas field for it. And in Northern Ireland, you get the two and a half cents for the energy value, plus to get a government subsidy of about six cents. So they're getting eight and a half cents up eight, in Northern Ireland. Eight and a half, Ireland. we get two and a half. If there was a, a system of payment by the government, which is in every other country, a biogas plant like here could pay a farmer approximately 30 euros per tonne for silage and put it into the digester, make gas and put it into the gas grid. And then Ireland would save a 200 million fine in 2020. We're going to pay the money to Europe rather than paying it to Irish beef farmers who are under pressure. Just a few kilometres from Billy's AD plant is the country's first gas injection point. It's part of the Causeway project, an initiative by Gas Networks Ireland to introduce biomethane into Ireland's gas grid. So this site can take in gas from three different AD facilities, and even though you have instrumentation at each site, it's our job as Gas Networks Ireland to completely and independently validate the gas so that there's no risk to our gas network or to our gas customer. So all these instruments here are doing a series of things, confirming the gas quality, confirm that it meets the, the minimum standard, and when all of that's done, which takes about two or three minutes for each delivery, the valve here will automatically open, and the gas is flowing straight into our network at that point. Our control room now in Cork will receive that information on a live basis, and we're able to see the, the full right. volumes going through. And how many of these will you have around the country? So we're looking to do about 18 to 20. Uh, our plan really is to go much bigger for the next ones. So this facility can handle three AD sites. Our next one will be able to handle 20 AD sites. What's the potential here? So ourselves and our parent company, Ervia, have an ambition to get to 20% renewable gas by 2030. Most of which will be rural, most of which will need a service like we were seeing here to actually collect the gas as well. All very doable though. And is this, this the very first one to be done in Ireland to inject into the grid? Yeah, this is both the first central grid injection facility and also the first direct injection. So it is physically the first biomethane injection facility here in Ireland. So this is going to be part of a really big future, big change in Ireland with exactly. renewable gas now coming this onto the, the grid. This is the key enabler, you know, and obviously there's a huge number of customers that are waiting for and really wanting to get, get hold of this gas. Uh, so this is a great opportunity and it is the, literally the very first site. That's fantastic. Thank you, Ian. Anaerobic digestion is now well established throughout Europe. Last year, almost 19% of the gas used in Denmark came from AD plants. We now have a great opportunity to replace imported fossil fuels with local renewable gas. But it needs to be done in a way that doesn't further intensify the pressure on our land or increase the spreading of fertilizers. It's clear that this won't happen without an effective government policy and financial support structure for farmers.